Welcome back YouTube, Tutor UK, Tales from the Blast Furnace. Well, Flas, hmm? you know we're finally here, right? Well, we... It's Friday then, it's Saturday, Sunday, what? It's Friday then, it's Saturday, Sunday, what? It's Friday again, it's Friday, Sunday, hey! 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 Bit of a pickups, giftage, double giftage. Um, bit of CX, not the roulette. Well, I suppose technically it is a roulette, but I, it, I've done all that. Um, so some CX fodder, bit of sexual healing, and a bit of eBay, and that's it. Um, I'm gonna say short and sweet, but I'll probably fucking spin it out for God knows how long. It is quite warm. Do you want to see how warm it is? It's not even fucking sunny outside. It's thirty-one, nearly enough thirty-one degrees. Um, American friends, here you go. Look, so for American friends, eighty-seven, eighty-seven point six degrees Fahrenheit. There you go. Saturday, we say it's, it's just muggy, really muggy. Door shut, so that's probably going to go up a little bit. Um, yeah, I've been, um, we're still locked down, aren't we? Still in some sort of form of lockdown, obviously easing up a little bit here and there. Certain sections, not too far from where I am, I've been locked down again. I'm fortuitous enough not to be involved in that, but it's just, I don't know. The sooner we get back to normal, the better. Um, got to mention this game in the background. I've just been watching... Um, Champion 2D Rob. I meant to I shouted Rob out before, and um, he'd done some. Um, he's done a couple of videos back to back, but obviously released them, you know, at uh, different points. And he'd just done his Super Famicom pickup video. Watched that this morning, and uh, he mentioned a particular game on, on funny enough, on the Super Famicom, uh -huh. uh, and it was Gundam Gundam Wing W or something. And um, he mentioned that it got released on the PlayStation. I think there's a couple of releases, maybe three. Uh, the last two, the latter two were like polygon ones, but the first one was a, a 2D sprite. Um, so long story short, is I've actually got the game. <laughs> Didn't even know I had it. Um, I'm sure it's this one. This is Gundam, Gundam Battle Assault. I, I mean, I might be wrong, um, but it is a 2D one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one mech fighter. It's actually, I got a clue where I got it from. Fucking Scooby, probably either the car boot or this might have been a game station one yonks back. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's it's that one. Now, the reason why this has surfaced, I don't know if you can see over there, that's where the, the PlayStation 1 wall is. Because basically, um, doing the jewel case video, I literally had to take all the games off the shelves to, not all the games, but I had to take a lot of the games off the shelves to get to them. And I was a lazy bastard and I didn't really. I put them back in no order, so there's groups and piles of games all shifted around, and it, like I say, it was just weird because I was look, just looking for something to put on in the background, and I saw it because ordinarily that probably would have been at the back with the bees, and it's like, oh, I wonder if that's the same game. Looked at the back, I thought, wow, there's a good chance. Uh, so yeah, uh, in homage to Champion 2D Rob, go then battle us out, as he says. So Gundam Battle Assault, there you go. Bit of PS1 love, bit of Gundam love. God damn it. Mm. So what have we been up to? And uh, not a great deal, like I said before. Still in that sort of weird lockdown-y type phase. Um, and because of where I'm located, the local car boots are they're shut down anyway as part of that precautionary thing. So th hopefully they'll start back up next week. Fingers crossed. Um, but some of the other lads have been going, I don't think... Uh, it's been a great car boot season for what little there has been of it. Um, but I've still got plenty of stuff I need to get shifted. So fingers crossed, have a word with my good mate Rob. Um, you know, if he wants to stall out and have a day out, have a morning out again. And we can sell some shit and maybe buy some shit. It'd be, uh, it'd be really useful. Because there might be movements. And I'm not talking about my bowels. Um, but there might be movements. So, yeah, it might be uh, a bit, not imperative... It might be really helpful 
to start getting shifts some of the stuff. Um, he says, while well, buying more shit that he's never going to play. <laughs> uh, many thanks to my Instagram um, doppelganger, fake doppel Instagram person, Dana. Dainster mentioned it to me earlier. To be fair, it's probably him or she or whoever it is is probably doing a hell of a lot better of it than I ever would. Uh, and by the way, it's not me. Not without bad English and uh, bad grammar, etc. But um, clearly someone's enjoying themselves. Oh, you, uh, look, this is a, a non, non-wife, non, still a Covid cut, I suppose, technically. Not everyone would go, yeah, it's still, your wife cut it better. She reckons she still cut it better. Um, I think she cut it less short. I think that's probably what it is. She doesn't like it uh, as short as this. But I'm just lazy and I just I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. You know, if I had a choice not to shave as well, I'd, I'd fucking pick that. Um, it's just more crap in it. I just want an easy life. Honestly, I really do. Um, right. We're going to do some gifts first. We're going to do some gifts. It's been fucking wild since I've had some gifts. Look, I mean... Mate, Rob is an exception because he's he's always gifting me stuff. But give some outs where if, you, if if that makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna do this this one first actually, because um, that one there's come from overseas. This one has technically come from another country. It's come from Wales, and um, I think it's still called Game Taff. Aiden, he put a post on one of the Facebook groups. I think it might be Galaxy Sega. He, he had some um, essentially sort of empty boxes. And he was offering them out to anybody who's interested, funnily enough. Didn't really, didn't want any money, he wanted trades. Um, so Aiden's a, a big Sega fan, and I sort of said to him, look mate, weirdly enough, that's one of the, the games that I'm after, just as, as a box upgrade, because um, I've got the set. And uh, he was like, well, what have, you got, what have you got Sega? And, you know, I'm, I've got bits of everything, but aiden has got quite a decent collection and he was like, well, any hints and tips, books and stuff like that. And I just didn't have anything that I thought was worthy. So I just said to him, I said, look, send me your pay. Let me, at least let me pay the postage and buy you a drink. And he wouldn't have a fucking jar of it. So I wouldn't say regular, um, irregularly, irregularly, irregularly. Aiden does come to somebody, to the meetup, especially Blackpool. So I said to him, look, you've got a couple of fucking pints on me. At minimum, at minimum, unless I can find something for him in the interim. But lots, such a sound gone, you sent me this. It's cost him like £3.10 and it's NHL 97 on the Saturn. So yeah, I have got a full Saturn set, but mine, I should have got it down. Mine's like faded there and I think there's some sort of water damage across the bottom. Um, and the manual, his manual is slightly better than mine. We did have a bit of a laugh and a joke because you know, some people say these are the best, these are not the best Saturn boxes. The best Saturn boxes are the clamshell ones. These are a close second, but it's these stupid spindles that they put on there. So no matter where you put the manual, it it does it can't sit flush because obviously it's sitting on top of that. So you end up with this like weird, and this is not too bad, but you end up with this weird kink. And uh, what they should have done is took that one out there and had a, a manual holder, so the manual would sit in that recess better. But instead, it just gets crushed between two fucking spindles. But anyway, by the by. Many thanks to Aiden. I'll put a link to Aiden's channel. He ain't made videos for ages. He was um, doing a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Like Sonic, um, I want to say fan translations, not fan translations. You know, like, um, what they piss about with it, mods. Uh, and something else, I can't remember what he's doing. He's doing something else. But he doesn't. He has not made a video for a fucking while, I don't think. Um, yeah, quite a regular poster on, on, on the groups and stuff. But yeah, big big Sega guy. Um, but yeah, brilliant stuff. So a couple of pints on me, Aiden. If we ever get fucking to that stage. God, we've got to get back to normal. Some of the shops are opening. I was up town this morning. Uh, a few more charity shops are opening. There'll be a few more next week. Um... And I was speaking to a lady in one of the, um, it was just like a, uh, it wasn't a charity shop. I can't remember what shop it was now. No, it was Greg's. I was getting a coffee. And uh, she asked how I was and stuff. Because that's my little routine, get a coffee or latte, walk, walk around the charity shop. But anyway, so obviously I sort of say hello to her and stuff. And she sort of said, oh, how are you getting on this? And I said, oh, fine. I said, nice to see you back open, blah, blah, blah. We had the usual conversation. And um, 
so it said it will be interesting to see what happens next week because obviously next week in the UK uh, there's, you're going to be made to wear a mask which for me is like the fucking horse has already bolted I'm not going to get into politics in terms of the whole Covid thing but doesn't make any sense to me really doesn't but um, like I said I'm just I just want things back to, to some sort of sem semblance of normality to be honest I know it, it probably never will be that way um, and uh, talking about masks and normality and stuff like that watch uh, and a shout out actually shout out to um, Bangkokian 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 uh, he's, a, he's a great he's back making videos again now he went had a bit of a, a sort of on-off hiatus thing um, and he's making sort of regular content he lives in, out in Thailand uh, basically so he's an expat in Thailand um, mainly into his current gen stuff but I just like his, his, his stories about living in Thailand and he said obviously over there it's like it probably would be in China and a lot of the Southeast Asian countries you just wear a mask as normal because of the pollution and their death rates is just ridiculously low ridiculously low and it, for them it's just the norm um, so I think there may be parts of that that's going to come come into play into our um, daily lives I think um, let's be honest two meter rule or a meter rule especially at some of these gaming events probably wouldn't be a bad thing for the stinky bastards <laughs> <laughs> wear a mask it might even be better eh? uh, so yeah so there might be some bonuses come out of it you know some pluses but it's just different isn't it I think it's just a different different way of um, living maybe potentially um, so yeah let's uh, see what happens there fingers crossed we get some to back to normal which I've already said about six times about getting back to normal right Talk about abnormal. Um, I've got another. I've got a, another gift all the way from the United States of America. Um, I can't remember what. The, what oh, he bought that. That was it. Okay. So the person sent me this. He. <laughs> I think he'd, he'd either. Did he buy it again, or did he get it in part of his? Um, his gift box that he buys from Floyd, um, what's the fucking thing called? I can't, there's a couple of people that I watch that, that subscribe to it. It's a monthly box thing, it's fun out of my fucking head. Um, and he makes me laugh because he never gets a one up. If anybody's watching will know who I'm on about now. He never gets a one up. They treat him like dirt, they spit on him when they see him. Uh, and he obviously got sent this game. He said that he's already got it. Now I can't remember if it is them that sent it or he bought it from a shop and he'd already got it. I can't remember. But he basically sort of said, "Look, if anyone wants it, let me hit me up." And I sort of said, "Look, I wouldn't mind it. You know, I've got the retro freak. I can play multi region stuff." And he really kindly said, "Look, send me your address. I'll send it over." So we've been actually conversing a little bit back and forwards. And I've been a big admirer of this guy for a while. I've meant I've shouted him out before. It's Tony from Back in the Day Gamer. Um, So he sent me his email, because uh, I you had to send him my address. <laughs> I offered to pay postage, he didn't want to pay postage, it's cost him basically the best part of $15. So what's that, 12 quid, 12 and a half quid uh, to send this game. Um, oh shit, I should have done this better really. It's Because <laughs> he asked me what, obviously, my name and address. And so when I sort of told him a name, he his reply back was something like, "If that was ever a, a if I was ever gonna guess at a sort of uh, atypical Englishman's name, yours would be it." And I said, uh, uh, "By the way, it's not Mister, it's, it's Lord." So for those of you who can sort of see, yeah, it's Charles Wood. Um, uh, yeah, it's it is quite an it's not. I suppose it is a little bit uncommon, but when you start looking for it, it's not that uncommon if that makes sense um but yeah bless it so this is from tony i haven't, I haven't opened it i said to him i'll do it live do it live um obviously i'm gonna um reciprocate uh, said gift because i know there's a few bits is half is he is after um so hopefully we can do that and so what Tony sent is i've got a clue anything about this it's a capcom game codename viper that's lovely condition that is uh, so again I, I, I can't remember what's the bloody thing that they subscribe to Floyd 
a monthly thing. I can't remember if he got it sent in that or he went to a game shop not long after the sort of lockdown was lifted and I think he went a bit nuts and he bought it and not realised he'd already got it. It's one or two other. Um, but either way, it's very, very kindly. He, he, there, was, there was two games that he'd already got and this was one of them. And I sort of said, I wouldn't mind Codename Viper. I can't remember what the other one was. It's in great condition. So again, huge thanks to Tony. Go and check him out. Um, back in the day gamer. It's... I think if it was if it wasn't American, it'd be English. Let's put it that way. He's not your typical, and there's no slight on the American guys, but he's not a typical American YouTuber. Honestly, um, really grounded. Doesn't take himself too seriously. Just loves making videos to make videos to share his love of the hobby, and that's I'm 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 in. I'm and he watches Bithead as well. So, you know, a bit, a bit divisive around these parts of late. Um, but still a great channel. So, in the immortal words of Bit Ed, I'm in! Um, <laughs> yeah. So, <sighs> sip a beer for Tony, although he probably wouldn't approve. He's a bit of um, what we would call probably a real ale drinker. Has all these weird shit fucking beers, man. Like marshmallow and pineapple and stuff like that. And he does all that weird, like, you know, food tasting stuff. They're quite really good. And he's going to be a dad. He's going to be a dad, so he, uh, that's his fucking, that's him up the fucking swanning. He'll, he'll age and he'll grey quicker than you fucking know what. But I say massive thanks to Aiden, um, Game Taff, and huge thanks to Tony, back in the day gamer. Please go over, check the channels out if you haven't already. There's going to be some up there. On, on either one or, or both for, for you know for your taste. I say Aiden's a big weird enough. Aiden's a big Sega guy and Tony's uh, a, a Nintendo guy. Although he has got a, an inkling for a certain um, I need to give it away that a certain Sega system, but you can see all that anyway on his videos. Good then, that's a lot of Not a great deal. I feel like I'm. I'm missing something, look. I don't know what it is. Well, that will be marbles. No, oh, I can't. No. I've had a few fucking cock-ups. A few things I thought were, were going to come come through and they just didn't. Really pissed me off. Um, I thought I'd completed a certain magazine set and it turned up and it was just... Fucking bollocks! That went back. That pissed me off. Uh, two games, that I, two games, two items that I bought come through, and they weren't as described. So I'm still in the process of sending them back. And these are from Europe as well. So Europeans usually aren't that bad, but they're both really fucking dropped a bollock, man. I bought a manual, and the pages are all fell out, and there's no English. The English section has completely been ripped out. <laughs> I got a protest. Maybe when Brexit went through. Uh, so that's pissed me off, and it's like, I just don't get it, why wouldn't you say that? Another game I bought, it's, it's smashed to smithereens, literally smashed to smithereens, because the guy just sent it in a fucking envelope. And I've just gone, you know what, I'm not having it. And he's like, in his, I think he's from Belgium or something like that, it might be, no, Austria. So we're going backwards and forwards, and I've just gone, oh, forget it. He wants to give me like... Two euros refund. I'm like, two euros. I didn't even pay. Eight hey, doesn't pay for the fucking postage. And he sort of said, "Well, how should I send it?" I said, "In a box." He went, "Oh, what?" And I said, "It wouldn't have cost any different. The size difference between this particular game and sticking it in a box or sticking it in an envelope, it's not. It doesn't matter. But he wouldn't have a jar of it. So I'm like, "Fuck you!" I'll have him money back. And I buy it again. So I've just honestly I had a fucking mare. Um, but one good thing is doing eBay. Actually, I've got two Ebays, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, we'll do this one first. So, there's a bit of history with this game. And I'd love to be able to fucking dig it out. I might try and find the electronic version of it. I've got this beer's going down now, wow. Yeah, it's gone up to nearly 33 degrees in here now. Right, I've got a bit of a history with this game. Um, it is a Super Famicom title, if 
from eBay. Yes. Not from Japan. This is from France. I'm sure it's from France, yes. <laughs> and um, every so often, I've got like a little list, uh, just in like, on my desktop, just a little tiny list of just some of the sort of, um, <laughs> fully enough, again, referring back to uh, Rob. I know Rob's got a similar list because he mentioned his video. And every now and then I'll go and check a few of the games and they just keep going up and up and up. It's fucking, I should just bought them 10 years ago. Um, but uh, every so often I'll have a look just to sort of see if there's one going in an auction or whatever. Um, and generally these don't come up for auction. And um, this I remember seeing years ago. Uh, again, reading the, the ultimate Super Nintendo magazine, Super Play. And if I can find the digital version, obviously I've got the, the full set of magazines, they're up there fucking somewhere. And it wouldn't look good me showing you on the camera anyway. Uh, if I could find the PDFs or something like that, I'll put like a, some Im images up so you can sort of see this in greater detail. And maybe I might, you know what, I might even put some video of it playing. I've never, I don't usually do that, but I might do that. Um, so essentially this game was featured in Super Play. Um, I'm not sure if it was a review or if it was like a preview. Uh, and it just caught my imagination. And the way the, the, the guy, the reviewers were describing the Super Play, it was like, oh man, that sounds awesome. That sounds fucking brilliant. So I don't think it ever got, I'm sure it didn't get released. It got a, like a, um, did it get a hack or something over here? I, can't, I don't think so. I remember looking on one of the sites we go to, there's no translation for it. Um, and I don't think. Mm, I don't know what it was. It never got a translation from the Super Famicom, but it did get a PS1 release and they changed the name. So some people might recognise this more as SOS. Um, but on the Super Famicom, and I'm going to fucking butcher this name because it's not even Japanese. Sephentrion, Sephentrion. So it's basically SOS. You base you're escaping from the, the Titanic that's sinking. So it's by Human. Ugh. Completely butchered the name. Um, Sephentrion, Sephentrion. But if you Google SOS. Um, You'll, we, this will game come up, it'll come up on the PlayStation as well. Uh, so I've done alright on eBay, I sold some other shit, I can't remember what it was now. And I had some money burning all in my pocket, as you do. Again, searching for this, and it come up in France. You can get this, it's, this is not, it's not super rare, it's not like, you know, fucking Rob's undercover cops or anything like that. But it can command a bit of a prize. And um, I noticed this one in, in, in France, and there's only other, one other one with this contents, I think in Japan, the rest were missing it. And I was like, is that just something that he's added in or what? And obviously doing a little bit more um, investigative journalism, <laughs> i.e. Google, uh, it turns out this is probably more complete than the most of the Japanese ones, because it includes like a map, and I'll show you. It, it, obviously it is an honest copy, it's not the Minter. Uh, I might need someone's help, my good mate Rob, or maybe even James. Sabi James might be able to get me a, a box upgrade. But as you can see, there's a crease there. Now in the photos, I thought that was a rip, but it's not. It's a crease. Um, it's what I like to call an honest copy. It's a nice honest copy. It's not a fake. Oh, was definitely not being fucking faked. Um, show you the right way around. So it's it's kind of like. Elevator action meets Castlevania meets Metroid esque. It's a real mishmash because obviously the Titanic's sinking, you've got to get out. Now, so that's obviously you've seen the box. It is all here. The manual's got a slight tear. I can't even fucking see that. There you go, look. So, look, I'm not going to read the manual, let's be honest. It's just going to stay as it is. Uh, that's, that's old. <laughs> there you go. It's just nice colour manual, full colour. 
try to find some screens. Eight way, so you can, like I say, it's like almost like um, Castlevania foot four, Simon Baumont. And I think that the boat rotates as well at certain times. I'll show you the map. I haven't played it yet, let's be honest. In, you know, we'll ever play it, maybe. But for those that want to know, that's what the cart looks like. See, the, the, off, the cart's in great condition. Always, like I say, from France. Uh, what I do need the help with from a mate, good mate Rob is I could do with a new tray. Now, I know Rob's got a load of like uh, Derby Stallion and Pachinko games that he bought. So, Rob, I'll drop you a message, mate. But yeah, if you've got a slightly better one, I'll, I'll, I'll swap you. <laughs> I'll swap you for a, a bit of a cracked one. Um, weirdly enough, again, oh, Rob, fucking Rob's on this video all the time. Um, it's definitely the plastic that he's made out of that just starts cracking. I don't know, he mentioned his game, uh, the Turtles one, was like that. It just goes brittle. It starts to, to shatter. But it's got all the uh, precautions and mailways. And this is what you don't see in a lot of them. Don't see a lot of... Don't see this a lot of the listings. few little dog ears you know it's been it's, it, this has been you can used and played you can tell so this is called the Crisania Chris, disaster eight people survived I think it's basically a, the fucking Titanic but there you go so it shows you the different sections of the boat and it's it literally it's like a platform and I think these are the different um, different points within the game as it starts to shift and move but if I can find it I'll put the super play um, review or preview piece in now so you can see it there and hopefully a bit of gameplay footage will either be running at some point here or I'll put it in now. So yeah, I mean, what did it cost me? Um, I chucked him a best offer. I think I ended up getting this for about 60... It was less than 70. It was either something like 62 or 67 with postage. It was something weird like that. And honestly, that's not a bad price at all. Um, so for mate Busabi James is watching, if you ever come across a box, mate, I just want the box. I don't care about the man, the man if it hasn't got a manual or whatever. But wouldn't mind a bit of an upgrade, or even if it has got a manual, might drop you a message. Um, but Rob, who's a bit closer, if I can steal that tray off your brother, that'll be fucking brilliant. And you know what was nice? That's what I meant to say. Uh, from the guy over in France, uh, he sent me a little note. There you go. Thank you, and have a nice day. I don't know who that is. But that was thought that was quite a nice touch. It's a bit of a while since I've added any uh, Super Famicom games to the collection, but there, there is a, there's a handful of games like this that were early that was shown early in Superplay and this one just really captured my mind I, I, it's never come out over here uh, I don't know what the PlayStation 1 game's like again I think that was only a, um, a Japanese exclusive as well called SOS but it's something different isn't it? something different <laughs> oh shit to sit on this show. <laughs> oh dear god what am I doing what am I doing Stick it, we'll do an eBay again in a minute. Just give me a sec, compose myself. God, it's getting warm. I've won a few. Well, hopefully, I want to get if they fucking turn up and they're not and they are what they say, not something out. Um, a few. What else have I won off eBay? There's two of the things due to, or one of the things due to come actually, yes. That was a weird one, yeah. Hopefully that hopefully that turns up. You know when you win some 
um, on an auction and you're not convinced that you're going to get it because you want it like not too cheap but you want it like cheaper than normal uh, we'll see we'll see if it turns up um, yeah because the guy was a bit odd anyway this one oh my god excuse me so chuffed to fucking get it I've been watching this sorry I've been searching for this and had it in my watched list since me last video um, PS1 title and you know when I sort of showed I got a manual for a particular game Ghoul Panic but within there um, and I don't usually take too much notice of the sort of um, the advertisements and whatnot but th this one and the, the weird enough the, the flip side in, in this anyway um, showed this particular game I thought I've never heard of that so I started having a did a bit of investigative journalism like you Google all of 50 hours and uh, I don't think it was an arcade I don't think it come out in the arcades someone will correct me if I'm wrong but it is part of the same series and um, obviously there's a lot of buy it now 40, 50, 60 you know, the usual shit and um, I thought, oh, then I did the usual, what is it sold for and you know it's about 25, 20, 25 quid ish game an auction so I thought right we'll keep we'll, we'll you know we'll be patient we'll, we'll and fuck me that I've, I've dropped lucky on this one <laughs> it is in fantastic condition okay the guy only sent it in the fucking jiffy bag I don't think he was a game well he wasn't because I could tell from the other stuff he was listing he had a few games but it was all other shit as well um so it's obviously he's, he's got this from somewhere um it's put up for auction and I've won it all in posted for £13.50. Fucking absolute stormer. And it's rescue shot. Now I'm cut! Now I'm cut! Um, so basically, this is a, a part of um, so the Ghoul Panic and um, the uh, Panic Bullets. <laughs> okay, one, two, and three, what they're called. I've gone blank. Oh, turn me in here. Yeah. Still the adverts. Point blank. Not po <laughs> um, fucking hell, Stu. So, it's yeah, it, it's part of that same family. This is my now. And I don't know if it, it's coming out on the. I don't know. Um, looking at it, I think it was like more aimed at the kids. It's more kid friendly. I don't know. Um, I think you have to help somebody. Use your skills as a crack shot marksman to fend off Bo's enemies. Is it Bo's? B.O. Did he go to gaming events as well? B.O. Uh, and shoot obstacles in his path as Bo's guardian angel. Yeah, so it's basically like rescue mission on the on the, um, uh, on the mass system. So you're off to this, this little guy here, Bo. He's treading along a path. And you've got to sort of obviously help him and shoot everything around him. New and innovative experience with PlayStation gun games aimed directly at younger audience. Told you, non-violent fun with emphasis on protecting Bo. Fast and frantic two-player action creates a strong team element. I, as I said, I did think when I looked at um, this sort of investigative journalism, 50 hours, um, and obviously found that it was yeah aimed at the younger audience. But fucking bit of an unknown quantity that is. And it's in fantastic condition, guys. And this is what I was talking about. This little mail away. So this has got Ghoul Panic on it. So obviously, the one in Ghoul Panic, on the flip side, had Rescue Shot. This has got um, Point Blank 2. I don't know why I keep forgetting that bloody name of that game. Uh, but all there, all, I say, really nice condition. So really, I think that's the lot, so to speak. Uh, if anyone knows any different, any of the Namcot and the GCon 45 games, um, let me know. But definitely that one, I think, drops under a lot of radars. Really does. You watch fucking, everyone's going to go mad for fucking rescue shot now. Um, but it looks a, uh, really does look a fun little game. Oh, Pete's Nestastic. 
I know he's, he's been on a bit of a PlayStation 1 kick. Nice to see. Nice to see the PS1 love. Show me the love, baby. Show me the love. Has anyone... Did you not know, anybody notice in my last video I fixed the shelf as well? Fucking ignorant bastards. Bill! Bill, where the fuck are you? Betty Horde, didn't even notice the fucking shelf. Look, look! No wobbly shelves, you bastards! You're welcome! Any immortal words are bitter. You're welcome! Balding head, I'm not quite there yet. Ungrateful bastards. <sighs> Fix the shelf. No one cares. Only interested when the shit's wrong, isn't it? Hey, okay, no. Anyway, time for a bit of this. Baby. Indeed, bit of CX in, bit of sex in. Um, I did mention in previous vid, uh, I'd hooked, still not right is it, I've ballsed it up now, I'd um, sent a load of stuff in, I, I am slowly, slowly just not going to bother with, with the installs to be honest, it's just fucking, I did that drop and go, I, I, don't know if, I can't remember what I said, but I tried the drop and go thing where you just leave the shit there and they sort it all out. Uh, this failed, that failed, yeah, whatever. Um, some of the stuff was all right and it went through, great. <laughs> but two of the things that failed, I've just sent them to the, sent them like the day after or two days after into CEX and the past of giving them money from. So it's just like, ah, man. At least I'm not stood there waiting around, but it's just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> just probably the local. They may all go that way. I say it's more the franchisees as the super, super strict. In just waste of time. Anyway, with some of the shit that I've waded in, etc., and I did mention I was going to do some like CX roulettes and stuff. But do you know what? The uh, the value of these games, because uh, <laughs> they're not cheap, and I did say I wanted to sort of. Um, Chip away at some of this, this sort of more expensive RPGs on there. Uh, one's an RPG, one is not. One just come literally out of left field, and I was like, uh, "We'll come to that." But uh, I thought, "Yeah, I've got to jump on that." Uh, I did order another massive hitter. Uh, some of the lads have seen how it was sent from CX, which is absolutely atrocious. Uh, less how it was sent, but more it was no manual, and even the insert was fucked. So it just went back. Because the thing now with it, ordinarily I would have kept that as a placeholder and I said before, I'm not doing placeholders of CX anymore. Uh, because obviously if you buy something and then you try and return it, even though I've bought, say if I bought um, Rescue Shot from CX, I had no manual. I mean, oh, actually, every gas is in great condition, I'll keep that. And another Rescue Shot comes up with CEX and I'll, I buy that. But say like the case is cracked or... Uh, the inserts water damage, but the manual's okay. I think, well, actually, I'll have the manual out of that because obviously I've already bought, it didn't work that way anymore. Not, no, because what they'll do, they take photographs of everything. So if you try and return the second one that had the water damaged without the manual because you've put the manual in the other one, you won't get your money back. So anything now that is not how I want it, it's going back, regardless if, if everything counts, it's absolutely fucking honky dory because it's not worth the ball ache. Uh, so it might just be my local one. But I'm not tra travelling miles and miles just to return some it when I can just put it in the fucking post for free. Yeah, it might take a week or two for them to do it, but nah, I'm not doing that anymore. So, long story short is, there's not as many games here as I wanted. Um, I've got a couple coming in the post, uh, and hopefully we'll see what's, what's traded in over the weekend and, and into next week um, and see if we can get you know another sort of video together but what we have got is two fucking crackers two really nice games in really nice condition as well and like I say I had to open these up because of the value you know these ain't a couple of quid games and if they weren't right they would have had to have gone back soon sooner um, and not wait around because the thing is with stuff on CX I've noticed it it don't fucking last long 
there's a lot of people with not a lot to do sat at home. <laughs> like us, like me. I'm always sat at home anyway. This fucking beer is sweating. I don't know if you can see it. Look. It's raining, I can hear the rain. This is what I'm talking about, this weather, it's fucking bollocks. Crikey, I do Jesus. Right. Enough dripping everywhere. That's first up, the, the, the least expensive, or well, the less expensive one. Um, what did this cost me? 50, nearly 50 quid, I think. So I'm saying, not, okay, not cheap. Um, it's the only one on there. I did a quick, because I've got an idea, you know, pre-lockdown, a couple of these games would appear quite regularly on there, and they're just, just not showing up at all. Um, so I just did a quick double check, um, you know, on Google. Investigative journalism, 50 hours of work, <laughs> just to make sure. And, um, it's kind of like a quirky, it is an RPG, but it's it's like a dungeon explorer, but with RPG elements, and also with um, like a, a SimCity type twist to it. You can actually improve the town around this particular thing, and it's called As Your Dreams. It's Konami. Konami title. <clears throat> so essentially, you're this guy, that's a dungeon, you can... It's a dungeon crawler. You go into the dungeon, you work your feet way through the levels, you get fucking gold, whatever. But the town around it, <coughs> obviously you can then, somehow you can use to invest into that town. It's meant to be a really good, decent game. Um, and it is all complete. It's got the weirdest disc, but lovely in the same breath. You've got the old man of the wow. I did think... This was a fake because it's got this weird, like weird gloss. Look, see how shiny, shiny, it's a shiny. I thought, oh, someone's reproduced this, but there's no way they could re reproduced it. And this whole thing, let me just show you. That whole manual is English. It's all in English. Look, it's all in English. So ordinarily, you know, if there's any US guys out there. Um, over in the UK with PlayStation games, they, they tend to be multilingual and the manuals tend to be like you could fucking choke a donkey on them. Um, but this is literally just all in English. Yeah. Um, Mon, Mons, Mons, Mons Bayer, Mons Bayer, Monster Bay, maybe Mons Bayer. That's what that's what the town's called. But yeah, it's meant to be quite a quirky. No, it's just a good game. So, yeah, sometimes CEX are really good, but sometimes they're so fucking bad. But it is that sort of early, I say early, what is it? 1219 for Mr. Burnout. Can you see that? Hushka. Um, the sort of 3D polygon with 2D background, but um, nice to have for a load of old PlayStation tap. Mm. Right, the last one, the last last item, and I can let you go then. Um, this one, I, I, I thought I might have had it. It's not, it looks not too dissimilar to a game that I got from the charity shop fucking years and years ago. It hasn't got the manual, I ain't missing the manual for it. But that game is a PAL exclusive, it's called Hal Knight. So when I was seeing this, I thought oh, it's the same. You know, as you're scrolling through it, I thought, hang on, no, it's not, it's not. So, again, did a bit of a, a bit of a Google. I'm not going to say that again. And um, I was like, hmm, I might have to have a punt on this. This one was like 70, it was 70, basically 72 quid, it's two pound in the postage. 
And by the way, for any of those people that might be uh, using CEX and maybe buying the bigger bigger ticket items, um, they've now increased the limit of free postage from 50 quid to 100 quid. So you only get you only get free postage anything above 100. So anything less than that, you still you pay postage again. <laughs> Whatever. So it costs about 72 quid. I think it's still a great deal. This is in fantastic condition. It's all complete, otherwise it wouldn't be in the video because it would have gone back, hence my new policy. Uh, and it's chaos break. So you look at this and you think Capcom, you know, that kind of ilk. Um, more so when you look at the back, at these characters. I mean, that look that screams Resident Evil. So essentially, it's... Um, it is kind of Resident Evil-esque, it is survival horror, but, oh god, it's an absolutely beautiful condition this is. I don't know a great deal about it. It basically says on the back, a 3D event in real time rendering, the enemy's out to get you, a uh, mystery needs to be solved. The human race begins its battle with mysterious alien, uh, alien cells. That confuse the molecular structures of all kinds. So yeah, it's it's kind of like a weird sort of half-life. So this is an example. So you see the size of that manual. That's not all English at all. Because there's like Italian at the back there. So I'll show you where the English ends, just as a reference point. <laughs> it shows you how big a game that as your dreams is. There you go. So all that there is the English. The rest of that is different languages. That's it. Lovely colour manual though. It it just it, it's like Alien meets Resident Evil. Um, looking at some of the, the graphics and stuff, kind of reminds me a little bit as well as Zombie Revenge. You know what? If I'm that way inclined. And if I could be bothered, I'll put some video up of Chaos Break and of Your Dreams so you can have a look. Because I don't do that often enough. I don't do it at all, actually, because I'm fucking lazy. And I'm more of a talking head. Um, well, I should probably do it a bit more. And for those that are interested, that's 3107. <clears throat> but yeah, Chaos Break, not a cheap game. Not a cheap one at all. Survival horror in space, I suppose is the best way to uh, describe it. That's it. That's it, guys. Um, what happens going f moving forward, I don't know. I said, I'll have some CEX credit burn on my pocket because one a big hit again went back. Um, so there might be a bit more CEX stuff coming through. Hopefully, the booters are on next week. Depending on the weather is, um, you know, and you know, see how, how Rob feels about it. <sighs> Two knows. Take it easy, YouTube, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye. <sighs> what is going on, YouTube? YouTube, two to UK, back again, back again. What the fuck? Sweating me fucking nads off. <laughs>